What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Torrance and in today's video we are playing with your favorite brand, Juvia's Place. In my previous video, which I'll leave linked right here above, I showed you all the Yami Angelina collection and with this one we are playing with their newest collaborator, the Melissa collection. As soon as this dropped, I had to purchase it. There was no way Juvia's Place was going to release a new palette and I not get it. And this collection contains an eyeshadow palette as well as a gloss. And I'm wearing both on the face right now. For this entire week, I wanted to make sure I play with Juvia's Place. And considering the fact all three were collabs, it makes me want to support the brand even more. I absolutely love Juvia's Place eyeshadow palettes. And it seems to be the brand that you all love the most as well. But the fact that they have not only taken their products, but also decided to help share someone else's ideas in their artistry, it just... I know many people don't like collabs. They figure as if the product should sell itself. But I am someone who loves to get into the heads of other artists. Anytime someone else can show me what their favorite shades, what their favorite formulas are, it makes me wonder, okay, how can I incorporate that into my routine? Because you never know what you're going to fall in love with. I am someone who started off in makeup absolutely avoiding eyeshadows. My favorite way of playing with color was glosses and blushes. So once I got into them, there was no stopping me. And to find out that there are brands out there that are affordable and make pigmented shadows such as Juvia's Place, you can't keep me off of them, honey. I have every single palette they've ever released and I don't see me slowing down anytime soon. And with them doing collabs with influencers, I got to be on it, honey. If you're going to support those that support you, honey, I got to be on it. And so I cannot wait to show you all how I achieved this look. I know I'm headed to work today, but I'm like, you know what? They ain't see me in no makeup in a minute. I've been sitting back. I've been being glam. But I wanted to make sure I get this done because honestly, I was supposed to do it yesterday. But I went and got me a little bit of extra sleep. But I'm going to make sure this video still get up for y'all in time. So I've been talking long enough. I want to make sure we jump into this. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you already have, I would like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. So with nothing else, let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. We are back, you guys, and today we are playing with the Melissa Collection by Juvia's Place. And I'm telling you, honey, I know a lot of people may not like the bulky packaging, but for me, I am loving the fact that these items are looking like PR boxes. Makes me feel like I'm on that PR list. Juvia's Place. Go ahead and hit me up. And this collection contains one eyeshadow palette and one gloss. The packaging on the outside looks just like the palette on the inside. As you can tell, this has a very shiny and reflective packaging. And before we get started, I want to give you a close-up view of it. I'm trying to see if I can get it in view without blinding you all. Right, there we go. And on the inside, we have four shades. It appears to be two mattes, one shimmer, and one glitter. This is what the box looks like for the lip gloss. This is what the gloss looks like up close. And before we get started, I wanted to show you swatches of the palette. This first shade is a glitter. It's called Extravagant. Okay, she's swatching beautifully. This next shade is a matte. It's called Modern. It's the darkest shade in the palette. Oop, I'm liking that. The next shade is called Dominant. It's the lightest matte. And last, we have the only shimmer in the palette. This is called Perfectionist. Alrighty, look at there. And before we get started, I also wanted to give you a swatch of the gloss. This is in the color Sophisticated. Okay, I'm liking that. This looks a lot like my Fenty Glow color. This is what these colors look like up close. Alright you guys, before we jump into things, my first thought is this palette is absolutely beautiful. It's neutral and to the point with us only having two matte shades. It's going to be very easy to figure out exactly what goes where. It's not going to be hard to figure out this is going to be a transition and this is going to be a crease shade. I mean, how many options do we really have? 
But my second thought is, palette aside, I got to find a different way of swatching because although doing the live swatches like this is really easy, trying to keep my face out of view while I'm giving you all a close up, baby, I'll be looking terrible behind this arm like this, like, uh, mm. And when it's time to give you a close up view, I have to bend and be all weird and things like that. So I think for my next video, I'm going to try swatching on my arm and then just bringing the arm up closer to you all and getting a close up view like that. Not 100%, it's just I know I want to continue to give you all swatches. I just have to find a way that makes it look visually appealing to you all as well as easy on me. Because this bending and all of that, honey, that ain't the business. But we done did enough talking about that. It's time to get into these shadows. And as with all tutorials, all tools and products will be in the description bar below. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So we're going to start things off with this shade here, Dominant, and use that as a transition shade. First thing you notice when you're dipping your brush into this shade dominant is that it is powdery, honey. I'm talking like ABH powdery. But you see that? It's pigmented, so honey, I will go in slow with this. She might be a transition shade, but truth be told, this color is beautiful enough to use by itself. Okay, Melissa, she said she's gonna make sure she give us plenty of color, honey. You see how fast that just went on and blended out? I guess I ain't mad about that kick up, honey. Not even sure if I'm gonna have to go in and dip for a second later. I don't even think so. I may just get a tiny bit more for this outer area right here where this bone is. Yeah, that was quick. Okay. Melissa says she knows something we don't, honey. She says she knows how to get her eye makeup done in two minutes. I'll be right back after I jump ahead and finish this eye. Baby, that blended out so easy and so fast. I am not sure if I'm going to be able to even need all this time that I set aside for today's video. But you know what? I ain't going to be mad about a quick makeup day. Now to deepen up the crease, we're going to go in with a smaller blending brush and this shade here, Modern. Same thing for this shade here, Modern. This is extremely powdery, but because this is going into the crease and it's much darker, I tap my brush off this time because I can go back in and build up. With a transition shade, I'm a little more comfortable with blowing it out further than what I need it to be. I'm going to start in low just to see what the pigmentation is like. Oh, yep, see, I'm so glad I did that. I tapped off my brush and look how much pigment we still got going on. Mm -hmm. She is building up beautifully. I may go back in with just a little bit more because I want to make sure the lowest part of my crease is the darkest and then we can buff and blend out later on. But you always want to make sure your blend is beautiful before you start going back in and adding more color. The longer you wait, the more difficult it's going to be to get your blend going. We can start to lift that up now. Get a nice transition going. And now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to try to tap very lightly on this shadow and pick up some of that kickback instead of knocking up new product. Tap off that excess again. Just get this crease nice and dark. Once we have an opaque crease, just lift that brush up as high into the crease as you can get it to soften up the edges of those lines. We just want a seamless blend. We do not want harsh edges. All right, look at that, baby. Right now, this color look like it could be a bruised eye or something. It's just the most beautiful wine color. But we ain't gonna stop here. I'm gonna jump ahead, finish the other eye, and I'll be right back. Now that we have our matte shades down, we're gonna use a glitter primer and cut our crease. And 
And normally I would just cut my crease just a regular around the lid. But because we only have four shades and I want to use them all, we're going to add a little more drama by cutting in front of our actual lid and bringing this up a little high. There we go. Making sure we are bringing the drama. All right, I'll be back after I finish this on the other side. That part is done, honey. Now it is time to get to these lid shades. But first, I want to fill up my outer V. We're going to go back into that shade Modern, which was the darkest shade. And I want to fill up my outer V. And I want to try to keep this in a controlled area because this color is a very dark. And this is going to intense in pigmentation by being on that glitter adhesive. And you can see how the outer V looks much darker than the crease, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Do this on the other side. And things ain't got to be perfect, but we want to try to get them close to being even. Alrighty, alrighty, that'll get it. Now for the inner half of our lids, we're going to go in with this glitter shade here, Extravagant. And lately, these Juvia's Place glitters have been beautiful. Picking them up on a silicone applicator has been nothing. Building them up on the eye has been everything. And it appears today they're going to continue on with it. Baby, I am here for it. I want to try to only keep this on the inner half to give me room for that next shade. So I want to build up slow. There ain't no point in line. I want to try to get as much glitter as I can on that inner half. And I want to make sure I bring it all the way to that point in front of our cut crease. Because I did bring it in front of the lid. See how it comes all the way there. We want to make sure all that glitter primer in the front has some specks on it. Bam. And you see we still got space right here for our shimmer shade. So I'm going to jump ahead, do that on the other side, and I'll be right back. Look at how pretty she is, honey. Just that all across the lid, I know will be gorgeous. But because we're trying to use everything, we're going to add that shimmer on next. And for the last step, we're going to add this shade here, Perfectionist, on the outer half of our lid. All right, before we add this shade Perfectionist, I do want to add, although I was able to finally pick it up on a natural hair brush, this was the most difficult shade to pick up on a brush. And it's also not giving me the shine I was hoping for. So honestly, I'm glad we do have this little glitter shade here. See if I can add a little bit more to get a nice... I mean, she is building in color and the shine went up a little bit. It's just, she not as shiny as I was hoping for for this palette. Wearing that by itself to me across the lid, I just don't see that one doing it for me the way that glitter did. But we're going to take this and add this on the other side. Yeah, like, okay, on the second eye, it's honestly building up a lot easier than it did on the first eye. Yeah, that easily did that. So maybe it was just that top layer, but it's still not quite as shiny as I was hoping for, for an individual shimmer in this palette. Okay. She cute and all, I would just, me personally, I would just want to turn that foil up a little bit higher. 
But considering what we have now, I'm satisfied with what's going on. So I'm going to cut away, finish off the face, and I'll be back to show you how we'll finish off the eyes and the lips. Honey, look at this. I am telling you, I am feeling like, oh, hmm. Oh. But we're not done yet, honey. We got a little bit more to do. I want to tell you some of the things I used off camera. First off, we have the Saharan Blush Volume 1 palette here from Juvia's Place. I normally use the Volume 2 palette simply because it has lighter colors, but I wanted to switch things up today. And I am telling you, honey, these shades are pigmented. Pigmented. I had to go in extremely light-handed. I'm talking about one tap into the pan, knocking my brush off, and slowly building things up. And I only went in with this shade here, Zane, simply because I felt as if it would be the easiest to blend out with this look. I did not want to take my chances with this shade, Abby. For eyeliner, you know I went in with my fave, the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the shade Perversion. Still using this mini up, but I do have a full size when this is gone already. It's still pushing, but I haven't quite finished my Essence Lash Princess. I'm hoping by the end of next week this will be gone. But the way I've been scraping on it, it may be gone by the end of this week. So we're going to keep going with this one. And for the lips, I went in with the Lip Bar Straight Talk Lip Liner. I went in, lined the outside of my lips, buffed it in just so I don't have a harsh line. And we'll be able to top that off with gloss later. But first, we want to finish off on the eyes. Oh, almost forget the glow. Honey, I went back in and I'm testing out the Natasha Denona Super Glow for the second time. I've only tried this once before and I can't quite remember which video it was, but I'll make sure I leave it linked right here above. But I'm telling you, I am truly loving this highlighter. Like, it looks like I'm walking around with a ring light on me, honey, and that's what I'm loving about it. When I first got it, the only thing I kept saying is I really wish this had a slightly more yellow tone to it. But truth be told... This is what makes it look like it's a ring light just sitting right there. So I'm loving this. We're going to go ahead and start using this a little more often. And because we have all this sultriness going on on the top of our lids, we want to go in now and smoke out the lower lash line. So I'm going to start off with this shade here, Modern, and a push liner brush. And with this shade being so dark, honey, I can already tell you, I know this is going to complement our liner very well. And I want to take this and try to create the thinnest line I can, as close to the last line as possible. I'm going to extend this up here just a little bit. I don't want to take it all the way up there because I don't want to risk it being noticeable. And before we buff that out, I'm going to jump ahead and do this on the other side. And now to buff out that color, we're going to use this shade here, Dominant, and a pencil brush. And we're going to start here. And I want to smoke this out a lot, honey. Like, I am looking for a ton of color, a ton of sultriness. And if this color don't give me the life I'm hoping for, we're going to go back in and add another layer of that darker color. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. You want to buff this out a little bit past the edges, soften this up and connect that outer edge. Yes, ma'am. Now that we have that done, I'm going to do this on the other side and I'll be right back. And to finish off the eyes, we need to highlight our brow bone and our inner corners. And because there isn't a shade really light enough for that in this palette, I'm going to go ahead and use the same highlighter that I used for the rest of the face. We are going to pick up an immense amount of this product for the inner corner. And put a big beam of light right there. Baby, you see that? None. Some. Baby, let me pick up a bunch of that on this one now. Oh, we. I didn't expect it to show out like that. Okay. You know what? That's a little strong for the brows, so we're going to wipe that off on the back of our hand. 
try to get as much of that off as possible. Then just go in with a little bit and sharpen up the line on those brows. Bam. You can see how that's shining. And I'm just not noticing. I never set my brows. Let me go ahead and do that as well. Just go ahead and brush a little brow gel through those. And now it's time for gloss and I cannot wait to put this on. I've been loving the Juvia's Place glosses recently. When I first started off with them, I was loving the shimmer formula, but that creamy one has been getting to me lately. And this looks like the perfect blend of both because although the color does look like a creamy formula, I can see that there are some gold reflex in here. So it's like having the best of both. So let me find me a little mirror here. And let's go ahead and get uh, applied. And at first, I didn't like the fact that these had that small tip doe foot, but then it's flat, so I can go ahead and swipe. And then I can just use that tip to give me precision application. And simply because I got big old lips, and I love gloss, we gonna add a second layer. Why not? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about, sis. Look at her, look at her. All right, it's time to set everything in place so you already know the routine. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter so things last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. I'm gonna give this a few more seconds to try and I'll be back to give you all my final thoughts. And this is the final look. I want to go ahead and give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you, honey, Juvia's Place wins again. Not sure about you, but I had no doubt that this palette would be a hit. The only thing I can say that I thought I was going to have a complaint about was this shade here, Perfectionist. To me, when I first put it on, I kept saying how I didn't think the color had enough shine and enough, um, how can I say it? It wasn't foiled enough. For most shades that are this dark, I generally prefer that they are either a complete matte shadow or an extremely high shine foiled shade. And when I first put it on, I kept saying, you know, I just wish it had a little more shine to it. Now that it's actually had time to set, it actually looks a lot prettier than what it did when I first put it on. So I'm no longer mad at that. And so with the eyeshadow, I had no issues. As someone who loves glitters, just having four shades and having one of them being a glitter isn't a problem for me. If you're someone who doesn't like glitters, you may not want to get this palette. Another thing I didn't notice at first is that the two matte shades are also pigments. They aren't just eyeshadows. So if you are someone who either has an allergic reaction to pigments or someone who has a difficult time blending those, I would recommend staying away from this. But as you saw during the tutorial, these products blended quickly and easily. So to me, I don't mind the fact that it has some kick up because I'm not someone who ever goes through a full shadow. So I think this is absolutely beautiful. The only, only thing I could complain about with this entire look is for my personal taste. The palette is beautiful. The gloss is beautiful, but I don't think I would wear these two again unless I switched up my lip combo. The thing is, I went in with my Straight Talk Living Liner, and just looking at my lips and my eyes now, I just wish my lips gave off a little bit more purple. So instead of going in with my wine colored liner, I think the next time I wear this gloss, 
If I wear it with this eye combo, I would go in with a purple lip liner. Other than that, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think this lip color would be beautiful for every day. Cause like I said, to me, it's sort of giving me Fenty Beauty vibes and that Fenty Glow lip gloss from them is absolutely fabulous. Like you can't tell me anything about it. And this to me, I can see me rocking this lip color with like a neutral brown look. This particular color here, I would have either went in with a purple gloss or a clear gloss, or next time I try it, I'll just put a purple liner underneath it. But we already know the smell, the taste, the color. You can't deny it. Juvia's Place just makes a nice gloss. For the eye look, I'm absolutely loving it. It's just the only con I see with the eyeshadow palette is the fact that because it is a four pan palette, you are gonna be limited to the number of looks you can get. The only, only con I can see about this eyeshadow palette is the fact that it's a quad with two matte shadows. So you will be limited to the looks you can do with it. Many times with the quad, if you get four matte shadows, you can switch things up. But more than likely, you're always gonna use this as a transition. You're always gonna use this in the crease unless you're going in for an all matte look. I really like this look and truth be told, I would not mind seeing them doing more of these four pan palettes simply because they're small and straight to the point. You don't have to spend all day looking at a larger palette trying to figure out, okay, do I want to use that shade? Oh, but that one over there is pretty. Oh, what about that formula over there? With this, I know exactly what I'm going to do when I pick it up and I can be out the door. I might have spent a little extra time pulling this glam off today, but that's just me. And I hope you all truly enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment down below if you picked up this collab. Right now, it does appear to be sold out on the Juvia's Place website, but I'm hoping that they do do a restock, especially in Ulta stores to give more accessibility to everyone, including that discount that you get with that coupon, because baby, I love buying me some Juvia's Place in the store. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you already have, I would like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And make sure you stay tuned for later on this week because this is the second collab I've done for Juvia's Place this week. And I'm going to be using the Disco Collection, which is their newest release. And it features Fumi once again. And you all know how much I love and support Fumi. So I cannot wait to get that palette. Fumi did their very first collaboration. So to know they gave her a round two. And these are going to be blue shadows. I can't say what's going to happen. All I can tell y'all is, you know I'm not the biggest fan of blue eyeshadows, but the Wahala 2 gave me a fabulous blue look. And so I'm going to be optimistic with this one. And considering the fact I trust Fumi as well, we really, really are excited to try it out. But it's just like, I still haven't gotten to 100% on, oh, a blue look? Let's do it. Come on, baby. I'm excited. I'm excited to try Juvia's Place. I'm excited to support Fumi. But just blue in general is still like, uh, sis, I don't know. But we're going to go ahead and do it. And I've been talking long enough, but I need to get ready to head out for work. So once again, I truly hope you all did enjoy this video. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite Juvia's Place palette is. And with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed. And until next time, goodbye YouTube.